I see. Yeah. yeah, and then you see what I see. <laughs> Do you see what I see? It's a little too early for that. We haven't even had uh, <laughs> Halloween yet. Uh, I decided. I decided to go. I decided to go back to the cold open stuff, like do a little cold open at the beginning of the show because I haven't done that in a while. And we had the perfect we had the perfect cold open last week when we all started harmonizing on WKRP in Cincinnati. <laughs> so 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 if you listen to uh, last week's episode, it starts out with us singing the theme song to WKRP in Cincinnati and then breaking into the show's theme song. <laughs> <laughs> that should be a show. What Best us singing? TV. No, best TV uh, intros or songs or whatever. Mm. Yeah, it could be. <laughs> mm-hmm. I um, I added some things to the show notes because I came up with a couple other like ideas for episodes. And so I added, um, so there's the one I told you about last week, which was actors who played real people in historical okay. films. Um, So I added Twin Films Part 2, the year 2000 to present, because we still didn't do the second part of Twin Films. Right. Um, Actors playing multiple roles in one film. And I thought thought of that one because uh, I just rewatched Dr. Strangelove the other day. Oh, yeah. Mm Mm-hmm. Or you could do um, Joe versus Volcano, Meg Ryan. Yeah. Yeah, it's so, funny. After I, um, after you sent out the notes, I saw that that post on um, Facebook, and I was like, "That's exactly what we're doing." Or the jump scares. Can you hear Verizon. me? Yeah, I'm listening. I was just, I'm just oh, typing, right. typing, typing on Verizon, getting annoyed with them. I'm sorry. Uh, so I uh, so I had on there um, the historical figures, uh, actors play multiple roles, movies that happen in one day. It's like movies where like the plot takes place over the course of a day. Yeah, of course, at 24 That's hours. It. I like it. Mm-hmm. I like it. Yeah, I like that. And then the last one I put down there also came from my rewatch of Dr. Strangelove, which is cerebral comedies. So not like you know zany comedies like uh, like American Pie or raunchy comedies like Revenge of the Nerds, but like comedies you got to kind of like think about, or like high concept comedies, hmm. like satires, okay. you know. Yeah. <laughs> that doesn't seem too enthusiastic on that one. No, <laughs> no, no. Yeah, I'm trying, I, I, when you say the subjects, I start to think of movies that I would fall into that category. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. What's that one? John Travolta played a presidential candidate, but it was kind of based off of Clinton. Something color, the color. Mm. Oh yeah, it was um, primary colors. Prim- primary colors. Mm-hmm. Would that be? Yeah, that would be something like that. Like okay. primary colors. Uh, Doctor Strange Love is definitely one. Uh, I'm thinking a movie like The Producers would be one. Okay. Um, <sighs> I had another one that I thought of earlier. I can't remember what the hell it was now, and it's one of my like favorite. <laughs> it's it's one of my favorite like satirical films, and I can't think of a fucking film now. And I feel like I just watched it. <laughs> it's just it's, it's been one of those days. Oh, uh, I've been prepping for the end of the or the uh, Halloween episode. I've watched the original Dracula, and now I've watched mm-hmm. the original Frankenstein. So Peacock oh, yeah, has well, them yeah. all. So. I lost Leo's picture. Did you, Kat? You lost my yeah. picture. Yeah. Yep. All we see is a hook. A hook. There you go, back. <clears throat> I had to. Uh, I had to close out of the Verizon chat. Uh. So. Um. What's the plan for Saturday, Lee? Uh, I was going to ask you what do you want to do because it's like. I can't, I don't want to, like, like, I can't drive up to you to, to get you to come back down again. And then, I mean, you could always drive to me, but then it's like two trips over the bridge. Well, um, and then well, I also, I, was, I also paid for parking already. So, <laughs> yeah. So it's like, um, do you want us to come down and Adrian can hang out with Kate while we're doing this or? Yeah, if she wants to, yeah. Yeah. I mean, what's the problem with that? Mike said, what if, like, Adrian came down with him and she hung out with you that night while we're at the show? So you 
Kitty wants nothing to do with Adrian. <laughs> Katie said that sounds good. She goes, might be a little bit messy because uh, Billy's coming next week to do our floors, and we have uh, we had to empty out all the cabinets in the kitchen. So it's like <laughs> it's, it's us. It's okay. one of those things. So. <laughs> uh, all right, so let's take a look here. Oh, so I was saying earlier how it's funny. Like you kind of learn. Um, hold on a sec. Learn about this business. <laughs> I'm freezing here. Did you? Can you guys still see me? Yeah, we still see you. Yeah. All right. I had to, I, I tried, instead of closing down the screen, I resized it. So I want to make sure you can still see me. So, yeah, we still um, see you. So, in like looking into like advertising for the show and stuff. <laughs> oh, God. You learn that there's different types of advertisements. Right. So there, there's the kind that pay you straight out for reading the ad online, which we're not popular enough yet for like, you know, Pepsi to pay us to read an ad for them. Okay. There's gratis ads like we do for the Newsly thing, right. uh, which is we read the ad and they feature us on the website. Um, okay. And then there's one that's commission ad. A commission ad is you read the ad, you give out a promo code related to the show. Every time somebody uses the promo code, you get commission on the sale. Okay. So we now have commission with Newsly. Um, okay. They said that now, anytime somebody uses our promo code with them, we will receive five dollars for every subscription that they get through the promo wow. code. I don't expect it to be a lot, but <laughs> that's something. And then we got approached by another company called W Energy Drink. Uh, it's an energy drink for video gamers, <laughs> and I already said I already said yes to it because it's a commission yeah. one. If if yeah, we fine. Fine. if uh, Somebody uses the promo code that's connected to our show. They get 10% off the sale, and then we get part of the commission for that. Okay. So I'm like, all right, cool. We'll do it. So I have two ad copies that I have to read tonight <laughs> uh, at various points in the show. So if you there, ever want us to do any reading yeah. or copy, that's fine. Let us joke. I will. I will. Well, I, figured, I will. I mean, yeah. I know Mike's a bit of a hard ass, but. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Hey, hey, hey. Women love this hard ass. Yeah. Let me. Uh, can off this ass. <laughs> I just got a text from myself. I send myself. So? I send myself text messages to remind me of things that I need to do. So I just got a text like, from from myself reminding me to bring in a power drill to school tomorrow. <laughs> STEM that class. Sounds scary. STEM class. You know, it's for the. It's to do. Do work in STEM. It's to let the ghosts oh, out of their brain. Well, it's, it's more scary that you're going to use a power drill. Link. <laughs> hey, I've been using a, I've been using a circulating saw all week. There's I, no digits missing. No, I help the kid. I help the kids build catapults. <laughs> all right. Um, so we're recording already, and again, now I have eight minutes of shit to go through. So <laughs> jump, jump scares, the lead in. Um, I'm going to do the live read for the dubby thing right before we get to our drinks. And then we'll do our normal shit, normal shit, normal shit. I have some shout outs again because of some, you know, people that were nice to us on Twitter. And then the main segment, I will do the newsly read and then the main segment. So we're going to have two live ad reads and I'm, I, I, I just wrote them up. So next time I might, you know, have one of you guys do them or something. Okay. Uh, I just figured it's easier for me to do it tonight since I just finished them. So. Just kidding. Already? Yeah, yeah already. <laughs> just kidding. Cover the mic. <laughs> so, so, oh, and I. I, and I, I, <laughs> I, 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 I so I, uh, I put links down there for the jump scares. Uh, I'm going to try to sh share the video. Um, I already tested it to make sure it works because I remember the last time I tried to do this, it didn't work. Uh, and it should be, I should be able to share the videos for this. So I figured I'm going to hear it. What's that? I don't know. <laughs> we'll see. Because I, that was the last time we did that was with Zoom. And now I don't know what this one, if okay. this one will do it or not, but we'll see. And if okay. not, if not, I'll figure something out. 
Uh, so I, I split it. I tried to do a short list. I didn't want to go too too crazy with this, especially if I'm showing clips. Um, so I did ten scary jump scares, from, you know, from horror films, and then I did uh, my favorite jump scares from films that really aren't horror films but have a jump scare in them. So I don't know if you got to see any of them or not. They're they're pretty good ones. Pee Wee's Big Adventure, Large Marge saying. saying. <laughs> <laughs> jump scares like me jumping at the wall. Yeah, Katie jumps at everything. If you if you talk to Katie, every movie has a jump scare, so mm. she jumped what we went to see Mulan in the theater and she jumped. <laughs> well, Mulan can be scary at times. I think it was what was it when the dragon first appeared? I don't remember. No, it was the fireworks. Oh the fire the fireworks at the end. <laughs> it wasn't at the end. It was when the, the Huns popped up out of the snow with the fireworks. Wow, uh, when the Huns popped up out of the snow with the fireworks. <laughs> The scary Is that ones. the animated or the live action? The animated one. <laughs> oh, okay. All right. So I'm ready when you are. Go ahead. Is that a confirmation? Go. Okay. Three, two, one, go. Yay. Yep. <laughs> no, if we had to sing uh, WKRP or not again. I didn't. <laughs> Welcome to Films and Fermentation, episode 78. Jump scares. <laughs> oh, oh, hey, hey, hey. Don't do that. <laughs> That's right. We are films. I saw and... that one coming. You saw that one coming. <laughs> we are films and fermentation, a movie and alcohol podcast. I'm Leo. I'm Kevin. I'm Mike. We're three friends who like to talk shit about movies while getting shit faced. In this episode, we begin the road to Halloween with our first spooky themed episode. Tonight, we talk jump scares. In a film, TV show, or video game, a jump scare is a moment in which something shocking or frightening happens or appears very abruptly, especially in conjunction with a loud, frightening sound. That is a professional definition I got online. <laughs> so like when I fart in the middle of the room. Yeah. <laughs> During the broadcast, and we all jump. <laughs> Don't forget to drop us an email at filmsfermentation at gmail.com or visit us at linktree.com slash filmsandfermentation to find all of our social media and podcast links. This episode is brought to you by Dubby All Natural Energy Drink for Gamers. Dubby is an all natural energy drink using a patented all natural coffee cherry extract to help fuel you. This ingredient is what gives Dubby its laser focused and fast reflexes, making it perfect for gamers everywhere. Dubby contains important amino acids and vitamins that canned energy drinks simply don't have. It never uses fillers or artificial colors. It's a sugar free and keto friendly alternative energy energy drink. Choose from flavors such as Dragonade, Beach and Peach, and Galaxy Grenade, guaranteed to boost energy without giving you the jitters. Go to W.GG to order today. If you use the promo code FILMSFERMENT, that's FILMSFERMENT, you will get 10% off every time you order. Dubby, be better. I'm getting good at this oh, shit. I, I love that. I love the name yeah. of the drinks, though. I love the name of the say, that, say that dubby oh. again. Dubby. 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 GG. Films and Fermentation oh. After Dark. <laughs> Dubby.gg. What are we drinking tonight, gentlemen? Well, I couldn't figure out. I, well, not that I couldn't figure out. I just didn't have enough of the ingredients to make anything. <laughs> So I went to Old Reliable, Old Smoky website to get some recipes from there, and I found one that's more of a Kevin drink. So I went <laughs> for it. Then I found out I didn't have quite what I needed, so I kind of substituted. <laughs> so what I found was pecan pancakes. But I didn't have the pecan whiskey, so I made banana pancakes. Ooh. It is... Um, the Old Smoky Pumpkin Moonshine with the Old Smoky Banana Whiskey. Sounds good. So, breakfast, Kevin. Breakfast. <laughs> breakfast. Breakfast. breakfast, finally. Breakfast sounds good. Speaking of Love breakfast, it. Kevin, what are you drinking? Um, I found a drink called Oops, I Shit My Shorts. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> that wouldn't shock me. That was... <laughs> that would be great for tonight. No, I am kind of going on the scare side. We are, um, I, I have, um, 
I have beers and such that I have lined up for, you know, all of our episodes in the month of October. But uh, my brother-in-law gave me a case, not a case, I'm sorry, a six-pack of this the other day. And I said, I know what I'm going to do. I'm going to save that till our uh, till our uh, uh, podcast uh, this week. And it's Sam Adams Jacko Pumpkin Ale. So it's not their Oktoberfest, but it does come with their fall seasonal variety pack. Um, this is Jacko's cinnamon and nutmeg aromas recall memories of freshly baked pumpkin pie. It has the ideal balance of seasonal spices with a crisp, refreshing finish. This pumpkin ale pairs perfectly with the transition of summer into cooler days and nights. Um, it's 4.4% alcohol by volume. And, uh, that's, that's what I'm, that's what I'm digging this, this time. That sounds good. I didn't know Sam Adams made a pumpkin ale. Yeah, hey, so, yeah. Jacko. So I um didn't know what to do tonight. I was gonna try to find something themed, but I really didn't have time to like look into it. So I decided you guys already had this last week, and it's the only thing from that six pack that Mike gave me that I hadn't tried yet. So I figured I'll try it tonight on the show. It's the State Park Blonde Ale from Tennessee Brew Works, brewed and canned in Nashville, Tennessee. 100% Tennessee grains. Uh, I agree with you, Mike. It's a little bitter, uh, more bitter than I expected it to be. You had said that for last week ale, yeah. for Blonde Ale, but it's it's still pretty good. It's still pretty refreshing. Yeah. You know, I, I don't, I'm not, I'm not, uh, not, not liking it, you know. <laughs> right. Okay. Come on. Kate, what are you drinking this evening? Uh, Leopard Boy Strawberry Lemonade Sparkling Hard Tea. Lover boy, strawberry lemonade, sparkling hard tea. <laughs> mm, <laughs> Adrian, is, Adrian is drinking uh, old smoky um, uh, amaretto alcohol. and milk. Mm. <laughs> so Mike made a thing called uh, he calls it uh, banana pancakes. It combines the banana, old smoky, and some other stuff. <laughs> Interesting. So my wife is sitting off to the side, off screen. Speaking to me from the gallery, <laughs> so I thought I waiting I'd, online with thought internet I'd, providers. Yeah. <laughs> so I thought I'd, I'd I'd include her tonight in our our little drink segment. So Mike, uh, do you have a history lesson for us? This day in film history, sixty-seven years ago today, October third, nineteen fifty-five, Captain Kang- Kangaroo premiered. It aired weekday mornings on CBS for nearly 30 years, from October 3, 1955, until December 8, 1984, making it the longest-running national broadcast children's television program of its day. Wow. And it's funny, it's like, I know Captain Kangaroo, I don't know if I watched Captain Kangaroo much when I was a kid, because in Philly, <laughs> well, in, in Pennsylvania uh, particularly, we had uh, Captain Noah. Captain right. Noah. Who was kind of like, you know, uh, Captain Kangaroo light. Mm-hmm. And so, like, less, he was less Australian. Less Australian, yeah. We less also, Australian, more Jewish. We also had, um, oh, God, who was that guy? He had, he had like a variety show and came on on Saturday mornings. Uh, he used to sing on the way to Cape May all the time. Al Alberts. Oh, yeah. <laughs> the, the Al Alberts show as well. That was like the mm-hmm. the Pennsylvania local shows. Um, yeah. But honestly, if I had my choice between Captain Kangaroo or Captain Noah, I would take Mr. Rogers every day. Absolutely. <laughs> every time. Yeah. Every time. Uh, the other one's an interesting one here. Yeah, in 1945, Hollywood Black Friday, a six-month strike by Hollywood set... Decorators. Uh, decorators. Turns into a bloody riot at the gates of the Warner Brothers Studios. We know how violent those set decorators can be. Mm. <laughs> oh, you saw what they did. Uh, you saw what they did with the um, uh, the Wizard of Oz. That one that didn't want to cooperate, mm. swinging back and forth, swinging back and forth in the back. Yeah. <laughs> That's yeah. right. Yep. I thought the rumor that was one of the dwarves. <laughs> yeah, he didn't want. He didn't want to cooperate. <laughs> he, he wanted to get paid. He wasn't. They were they were angry because they didn't get paid as much as Toto. <laughs> True story, by the way. They didn't get paid as much as Toto. <laughs> it makes me want to like. I'm not going to do it now because it's definitely going to take too much time. But like, look up 
what kind of movies, what movies were released in like 44, 45 and see like how the set decoration strike affected them. <laughs> <laughs> see like what came out that year. Uh, what's your fun drink fact for us tonight, Mike? I got some beer trivia for you, boys. Uh, Team Maker Hops are an unusual variety with a full, pleasing aroma, but an alpha acid content of only 0.6 to 0.8%, meaning they have nearly no bitterness. Because of their natural quality, these hops are sometimes used as a additive to chicken feed. Mm. That's all I got. So... Chicken feed and beer. Chicken feed and beer. <laughs> Get some drunk chicken. Katie in the background just went, ew. <laughs> like drunk chicken? Well, nice it's, tender. it's like she can't hear what we're saying right now because I got the headphones on, so it's kind of like out of context comment commentary. <laughs> <laughs> <That's> like... <laughs> well, yeah. So, so you get uh, these chickens that eat the hops, then you put a beer can up your butt and cook them that way. <laughs> beer chicken on top of beer chicken. No, beer can chicken is not bad, though. Yeah. Uh, so I decided for notes from last show, we should add a new segment every week. And that segment is going to be called uh, Show Descriptions by Glip. <laughs> Because <laughs> you remember, we, we read the show description last week, and then it was pretty comical. So I decided to look up the show description from last week as well. Okay. So last week's show was the uh, career of uh, Christopher Nolan. Uh, I have to say, um, we actually sounded really intelligent in that episode. No. Like, we sounded like we knew what we were talking about for once. We never I mean, we sound intelligent. Right we never too. do. I mean, it took 77 episodes, but we actually sounded like we knew what the fuck we were talking about for once. It was pretty cool. Even with the Kevin rant? <laughs> Even with the rants, because the, the rants actually added some like meat to this segment. <laughs> <laughs> and was, there's one thing I'm good at adding. It's meat it's to the segment. To meat to the segment. <laughs> oh, I can't wait to see the show description on Clip next week. <laughs> <laughs> so here is our show description from... <laughs> This is the episode 77 show description from Glip. The participants talk about mixed drinks with Fanta, the length of films, the multitude of Batman, campiness of characters, and fascination with time and realistic versions of Star Wars. <laughs> realistic versions of Star Wars? Where'd that come from? Yeah, I'm, I'm a little at loss with that one. I think it was a combination of us talking about the realism of Dunkirk at the end of the segment and then going into a discussion of Andor. Oh, okay. <laughs> but, I have not uh, watched this week's episode, so... I'm, uh, it, it, I'm telling you, it was, it, it was uh, like about an hour and a half um, longer than the previous episode. That previous episode was only like 50 minutes. Uh, but it was uh, it was entertaining, and we we did really sound like we had a, a good idea of what we were talking about there, because that comes from actually having seen all of those films, I guess. Yeah. Uh, Mike, I wanted you to know that all twenty five James Bond films are now currently available on Amazon Prime. On Amazon, yeah. While well, well, I was waiting for you, <laughs> thinking it was Thursday night, this one would normally do it. I went to go put the football game on. <laughs> but there's no football game on. <laughs> but I did TSA. All the James Bond movies. All are the on. James Bond movies. And I was like, I got to make sure Mike knows about that. Uh, all right. I did a survey on Twitter uh, this week um, about the previous episode. I said, uh, so this was Monday when the episode uh, dropped. I wrote, it's new episode day. Episode 77 just dropped. It's a look at the films of Christopher Nolan. Batman trilogy aside, what's your favorite Nolan film from the list below? Or let us know in the comments if there's another one that we missed here. Because I can only do who? I can only do four, you know, four in the list. So I mm -hmm. chose the four that we seem to have the most to say about between the three of us. So it was Inception, Interstellar, The Prestige, and Dunkirk. And after uh, a number of votes, we had a pretty decent number of votes on this. Uh, last place was Dunkirk with 7%. It's a little disappointing. I'm hoping more people have seen it than that. Second place with 33% is Inception. Hmm. Third place, uh, I'm sorry, 
uh, I said second place. Third place with 20% is The Prestige. Second place with 33% is Inception. And 40% of the votes went to Interstellar as the number one Nolan film. Okay. Which I can't argue with any of those, honestly, because I think mm-hmm. they're all great films. Uh, I, I, I would have hoped that Dunkirk would have got a little bit more love than that, but it's... No, uh, that would have been the still, order I put them in. Yeah, I mean, it's still a good list. I might have put mm-hmm. Dunkirk ahead of Prestige. I, I mean, I really, I like the prestige a lot, but I thought Dunkirk was a masterpiece. That's fair. You would have been yeah. wrong, but that's fair. <laughs> <laughs> I said we sounded smart last week. Let's not try to go two weeks in a row now. Uh, I didn't do any shout outs last week, so I felt like I needed to do some shout outs this week because uh, there were some other podcasters out there who gave us some love this week, uh, either through uh, retweets or likes or or listens or whatever. So I wanted to say thank you to the Geeky Dad Podcast, uh, Mr. Gentleman Podcast. Uh, as always, Wrestling World with Austin. Austin throws us out a, a shout out every week. Uh, Space, you, yeah, Space Castle Podcast, who designed our show logo. Uh, mm-hmm. Manic, Manic Pixie Weirdo. She had a, a very good podcast this week on dealing with uh, mental health issues. Okay. Uh, recast a 2.0, uh, who I'm kissing up to every week because I'm going to try to get them to come on our show when we do the Halloween episode. Uh, Bar Banter Podcast, uh, who are just, they're some really fun guys, man. You got to check out their show. Uh, mm-hmm. The Fan in the Van, uh, who does a sports uh, podcast. The Fandalorians. Okay. Kev, you got to <laughs> check, check out their show. They are three, okay. three English teachers who do a podcast part time. <laughs> And uh, oh, well, well, they they we're t- two quarters the way there, aren't we? Yeah, they they talk uh, they talk a lot of Star Wars, but mainly it's a, it's like uh, a lot of pop culture stuff. So okay. uh, the eighty seven fifty podcast with Yeti F. Uh, Yeti is one of the funniest guys on Twitter that I talk to, and uh, he's constantly posting like crazy shit. So he's he's a good guy. Uh, you mm-hmm. me, you me in a movie with Donald, of course. Uh, remember with out there, no pizza. There's no pizza, no pizza. but no, there's, there's pizza. no pizza. I'm but still looking into it. There's no pizza, but there is a promise of friendship. And yeah. lastly, the Second Chance Movie Podcast. That, that one sounds new. <laughs> that is a new one. Yeah, uh, mm-hmm. there's a couple new ones on here. Mister Gentleman, Geeky Dad. Um, these yep. are all uh, podcasts that are part of that independent podcast group that uh, we belong to on Twitter. So, okay. Uh, um, so that brings us to our main segment, uh, where we are going to be looking at best jump scares. The main segment is brought to you by Newsly. Me. You're not going to do it, Cap. I thought you were going to do the Sega thing for Newsly. Me. Oh. <laughs> 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 Me. Newsly.me, not Hal 9000, Newsly.me. <laughs> Newsly is an all-in-one audio super app for iOS and Android. It picks up the most trending articles on the web on topics you choose at any given moment and reads them to you in a natural human voice. For the first time ever, the entire web becomes listenable all in one place. Follow any topic from sports, technology, business, science, even articles about Bitcoin. It'll find you the latest articles and read them to you aloud. They have podcasts as well. Explore trending podcasts from over 80 countries. Our podcast, Films and Fermentation, is located there, too. Download and use Newsly for free now from www.newsly.me or from the link in the description. If you use the promo code ANFERMENT, that's A-N-D-F-E-R-M-E-N-T, you can receive a one-month free premium subscription. That's Newsly.me. Stop scrolling. Start listening. I am so sorry for that belt you came out of nowhere. You You just fucking fucking belched in the middle of an ad read. (laughs) (laughs) From my toes. It was Uh, uncontrollable. I'm going to call that a practice read and do another one. (laughs) I'm I'm going to help you out here. Hold on one second. I might use that as either the cold open or the blooper. (laughs) Uh, this episode is brought to you by Newsly.me. Newsly is an all-in-one audio super app for iOS and Android. It picks up the most trending articles on the web on topics you choose at any given moment and reads them to you in a natural human voice. For the first time ever, the entire web becomes listenable all in one place. Follow any topic from sports, technology, business, science, even Bitcoin. 
It'll find you the latest articles and read them to you aloud. They have podcasts as well. Explore trending podcasts from over 80 countries. Our podcast, Films and Fermentation, is there too. Download and use Newsly for free now from newsly.me or from the link in the show description. Use promo code and ferment, that's A N D F E R M E N T, and receive a one month free premium subscription. Newsly.me. Stop scrolling. Start listening. No way. Stop me. And that's your fucking fault. I had a burp building up as I was reading the second hattery. <laughs> you know, I was trying to hold it in. It was like it was like I got to I got to the tagline at the end and it's sitting right here. <laughs> oh God. Hey. I use you I use usually for my podcast. Yeah. And like I said, so much for us having two intelligent episodes in a row. All right. <laughs> So tonight's main segment, we are on the road to Halloween. Uh, so for this segment tonight, we are looking at jump scares. Uh, we have two little list, list, short lists here. The first is... Sorry. You all right? Did I get... Sorry, I'm going through my list. Katie wants to know what you're going to be going like at the wedding this weekend. <laughs> hey guys, the yeah. whales went that way. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I don't think we were anywhere near the rails tonight. All right, so we're doing best jump scares. We have a list of horror film jump scares, and a little bonus list of jump scares from non horror films. You know, because there can be jump scares in a comedy as well, apparently. Mm-hmm. Uh, the only uh, prerequisite I had for this tonight is that we went with one scene from either a movie or a franchise. So in terms of like Friday the 13th, uh, I used a jump scare from the first film and I ignored the other 37 Friday the 13th films. Okay. Um, so I st- stuck with a single movie or franchise for each of these. So the first one on the list, and I didn't do this in terms of like top 10 or anything like that. These are just as they kind of came to me or from some sites that I, I researched and such. Uh, one of these, Kevin, is the one that you had suggested on Facebook, which is the, the, yeah. red, the red Demon. Um, yeah. But the first one, I feel like is a very iconic one. And rewatching it, like I remember watching it when I was younger and it did make me jump. Rewatching it now, it's like it's not as scary because you know it's coming. Uh, but it's it's still pretty iconic, a little silly nowadays when you watch it, but I think it's a great one, and that's the stairwell death scene in Psycho. Now, I also said that I only did one scene from a movie as well, so Psycho had a few. I could have went yeah. with the I could have went with the shower scene because that's you know probably the, the most I- iconic. Um, but I feel like that is kind of like overused at this point. So I wanted to go with go with something a little uh, a little less uh, less well known. So I'm gonna share my screen with you, and we'll take a look at this video from the movie Psycho. Are you guys seeing my YouTube popping up? It's very yep. small. Yep, yep, yep. It's getting. <laughs> so I'm gonna skip ahead here. So we have our uh, detective character here at the Bates Motel. Describe it for those of you listening. He's slowly walking up the steps. Slowly he climbs the stairwell. The door opens the crack. <laughs> opens a little more. The, light the cat falls. comes out. And there comes mother. Yeah, no, a trickle of chocolate syrup can make somebody fall down the steps. Yeah, okay. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> that was jump scare number one, which was from the film Psycho. Uh, <laughs> any comments on that before I go to the next one? Or I mean, it it catches you by surprise, but um, I don't know if I I don't I mean it, yeah, it's a it's a good jump scare. It's not the scariest part of the movie, but it's a jump, good jump scare. I was trying to look for something that wasn't as, like, you know, overplayed as, like, say, the shower scene. Yeah, 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 yeah. And like yeah, I yeah. said. No, as no, a, that makes sense. When I was a kid, I remember watching as a kid going, you know, getting pretty scared at that. But now you watch it now, and it's kind of silly because it's, like, mm-hmm. 
you know, the movie was made in the 60s, so they couldn't really show, like, the the really gory, you know, shit. So, you, right, have, yeah. you have, like, you know, the, the little trickle of chocolate syrup on the guy's head. You have, well, uh, like white, you can't tell it yeah, and then, like, <laughs> the falling backwards down the stairs was, like, pretty innovative at the time. Um, because it was, like, a still camera attached to the guy as he was kind of, like, rolling back mm. down the steps. Now when you watch it, it's a little silly. <laughs> Um, but I still think it's a, it's a pretty classic scene. Uh, the next one is from the Texas Chainsaw Massacre. This is the original Texas Chainsaw Massacre from the 1970s. Not any of the really bad well, reboots. What's that? It has to be. Come it on. has to be. I'm saying yes. It is the we original, original. The original, You know, original. I heard this takes place in Texas. Yeah, it does. No, it's it takes, actually Oklahoma. It takes place at the Texas Roadhouse. <laughs> Um, so I'm gonna pain don't hurt. <laughs> pain don't hurt. <laughs> pain don't hurt. <laughs> so let me share my screen with you for this one, and we'll play it. And I titled this one "Hello Leatherface." Yep, that'll do it. <laughs> I'm hoping I'm not violating any like YouTube standards right now. Is this? <laughs> I mean, I'm, I got the I got them from YouTube, so I'm hoping that's like you know something to kind of. <laughs> well, that and your clips are very short. So yes, I don't they think, are. You know... They are very short clips. I I've kind of like scanned through to the points that we need to scan through. Uh, the next one I have on the list here is from Carrie. Uh, again, this is the original Carrie with. Uh, uh, Piper Laurie and Sissy Spacek. This is, you know, 1970s. This is the, uh, I, they're all going to laugh at you, Carrie. And this jump scare comes from the very, very end of the film. Let me scan to the point I'm looking for here. So we have our main character here, or the side character who survives the massacre at the high school. And she's visiting Carrie's grave in this uh, scene here. Yeah, that was, uh... As I'm watching some of these too, it's like, uh, man, some of this shit's yeah. pretty cheesy. <laughs> uh, I mean, you know, again, a lot of it's like hey. scary when you're a kid kind of stuff. True. At the, at the time. You know. At the time, yeah. Mm -hmm. I actually think some of the jump scares in the non-horror films are scarier than the horror film jump scares. I think some of the the jump scares that make Adrian do is scarier than most jump scares. <laughs> it's all the mood music, and it's all attention, and then I, you know. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I, and nothing happens in the movie. I usually, like, if I know it's coming, I kind of turn, I'll turn to Katie if she's watching it with me, and I'll be like, there's a jump scare coming. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, it doesn't stop her all the time, but. Uh, the next one I have here is, this is uh, one of the more uh, recent ones on the list. Uh, it's from the film The Conjuring. Uh, okay. which is a, uh, about the um, the Warrens who are famous uh, uh, like ghost researchers in the 70s. The mm -hmm. Amityville Paranormal Experts. Paranormal Experts. The Amityville Horror was based on their uh, on one of their uh, uh, you know, one of their research uh, uh, outings. The Conjuring is supposedly based on a true story. Uh, you know. But this is, uh, yeah. I saw the movie, Loosely. I saw the movie in the theater. <laughs> I have to say, this this movie wasn't a great film, but it did have some really, really good jump scares in it. And there were a lot to choose from. Mm -hmm. The one that I chose is a very, very subtle one. And it's called, a I called it a round of applause. So let me, mm -hmm. uh, let me bring the video up for you here. I like that so far I've been able to do this without advertisements popping up. He says before he probably screws himself on the next video. <laughs> so this is The Conjuring. Uh, so we have here is the main character, the mother of this family. She's wandering around the house because she can't hear something. Uh, I'm going to skip ahead to about the three-minute mark because she is investigating the basement, of course, as one does in a horror film. And she lights, she lights up a match, and something strange happens.
<laughs> I damn near pissed myself <laughs> when that scene <laughs> when that happened in the theater. Because <laughs> it, it's, it's isn't what I have to say for that one. Yeah. Really? <laughs> the, now that's a good one. I think that's a pretty good one because that's. Was, There's nothing creepier good. than a, a child's voice in a horror film anyway, I think. Mm. And so she's investigating the basement. She hears the kid's voice saying, hey, you want to play clap and seek? You know, and then all of a sudden, and then and, uh, and the lights go out. That's that's a, that's a good scare because it's a jump scare. It's also not a violent jump scare. It's just one that really kind of just gets at you and creeps you out. The next one was uh, Kevin's recommendation for this. This is... From the film Insidious. This one freaks me out. Every time, even now, even expecting it now, it still freaks me out. It says, look. And I, I've I've seen this as like a still image, too, like a million times. You have, I've seen this everywhere. You know, like the, the it, what you're about to see is the jump scare comes up as like mm-hmm. a meme all the time. Uh, but like you said, even, even despite that, it still kind of like catches me off guard. So let me uh, bring that one up for you from the film Insidious. I have to bring it back a little bit. Well, this scene's messed Mm -hmm. up, too. The shadow guy that just kind of, like, you know, freaking points. Yes. <laughs> yep, that was, that was, just made the fucking hairs on the back of my head. Go <laughs> that is a really, really good one. That is definitely a really good one. Mm-hmm. Uh, <laughs> just even just the just the scene that like that that brings you into that. You know, she she's recounting mm-hmm. the story of the shadow figure in her kid's bedroom, and uh, you see the shadow figure. You see it pointing. You're assuming that the red demon behind him is probably the character she's talking about. Um, but yeah, it's still like, that still gets you, man. That's so creepy. <laughs> the next one I have on here is pretty iconic. I'm fairly sure we've all seen this one. It's from the film Alien. And I titled, I titled, <laughs> I titled this jump scare. Hello, my baby. Hello, my darling. <laughs> Hello, my darling. Hello, my right girl. <laughs> So let me bring up the video here, and I will share the screen with you. Here we go. All right. Okay. All right. There we go. Get this man some Pepto Bismol. <laughs> <laughs> what I love about this scene, and I mean, I'm not spoiling. It. Obviously, you're listening to the podcast, so you're not seeing this. But uh, this is where the alien, the chest burster, is bursting out of Kane's chest. And um, what I love about it is, you know, uh, there were only two cast members informed as to what was going to happen, so the reaction from the staff was genuine. You know, uh, the fear and the the concern that they had was was pretty uh, pretty on point. Yeah, and I, uh, the, the, to back up what you were saying, yeah, like it was it was a moment that was planned for, by uh, uh, by uh, Ridley Scott. Uh, obviously, John Hurt knew about it. He had to have mm-hmm. the thing busting out of his chest, and I think uh, yeah. Bilbo Baggins was the only other one who knew about it. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Ian Holmes. I think Bilbo he was the only Baggins. other one that knew about it. And then, uh, yeah. So the rest yeah. of the cast had a pretty natural reaction to that to that chest burst, which is a great scene, such an iconic scene. The mm-hmm. other thing that always kind of like makes it a little uh, creepy for me too is uh, when you look at it, 
at the very very end if you don't if you notice it like he's still kind of alive as the thing's crawling out of his chest because he's laying there and like his, his like hands are shaking it's like mm-hmm. <laughs> and his that hands just adds are a little shaking, bit of like realism yeah. to it and it goes Oh, not again. Not again. Get that boy some pet up his bow. <laughs> said, he said, we own Pluto. And I said, how'd you know? And he said, because of the bark, you dummy. Because of the bark. <laughs> uh, for the next one on the list, I wrote the movie It. And this is the new It. This is the uh, the updated version of It that was in theaters. Um, and I put down, as far as jump scares go, all of them. Even though I said... We can't. We're only choosing one from a movie. I couldn't oh. find other ones in this movie, like just a single out one. You know. I will say mm-hmm. uh, before we move on to it, and, and just backing to Alien a little bit, there was a second jump scare scene that really kind of gets people, and it's at the very, very mm-hmm. end. She's escaping, and she goes to you know grab something, and the hand just goes, whoosh, you know, like right after try to grab her, and that's when you know it's on board. So. Second, I think that's the one that she's got the uh, she's got the spacesuit on in that scene, and you kind of get a glimpse of the creature's shadow, like kind of in the side of the helmet, like right before right before it grabs her hand. It's like mm-hmm. one of those like real subtle. I could have added too. I didn't put right. it on the list, but I probably could have added uh, the signs from M Night Shyamalan. Uh, the scene where they're mm-hmm. watching oh, yeah. the video and of the kids' birthday party, and you see the oh, alien like walk by outside. <laughs> oh, yeah. That's a great one. Yeah, that was, and in the sixth right sense, there. when he sees the kid with the uh, bullet hole in his head, <laughs> like there, there are two scenes that always make me jump. Uh, yes. So for it, it says I have all of them. So the video I have is like a compilation one. I'm only going to show like a, a little brief clip of it because um, it's fairly long. But this this newer version of it, the one with mm-hmm. um, Tim Curry, obviously is like a classic. I think. Uh, yeah. But this version was pretty good as far as reboots go. At least part one was. Part two was okay, but part one with the kids was was pretty creepy. So I'll just show a little bit of this. You know that a movie that's pretty much predicated on jump scares. Like that's like the whole mm-hmm. the whole point of the film, especially the yeah. first part <laughs> because it's involving the kids and you know with with kids it's always like that's a thing. And speaking of things, mm. the next one on my list is The Thing. Uh, and I'm going to have to talk to you guys about The Thing later on because it is uh, the 40th anniversary of The Thing this year. <laughs> I don't want to know about your thing. Let me get to the part where my thing pops out. Here we go. So they're doing... Whoa, uh, whoa, 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 whoa. This is whoa. the part where uh, Kurt Russell's character is doing the uh, test of their blood samples uh, to see which one reacts to the heat. The one that reacts to the heat is the sample that belongs to the creature that is uh, hunting them. Notice the prosthetic hand in front of Kurt Russell right now. <laughs> mm-hmm. That looks totally real. Oh, I love this fucking movie. <laughs> and it's and it's practical special <laughs> effects. Now there was another scene from the thing that I probably could have chosen as well. And that would have been the scene where they uh the doctor is giving the guy 
uh, you know, he has the paddles and he's he's trying to defibrillate the guy. And he goes to defibrillate him and the chest opens up and bites the guy's arms off. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so that's that's probably another one I could put into the thing. But I kind of thought that's uh, that scene I just showed is one of the ones that kind of gets overlooked a little bit. Uh, Friday the 13th I have next on here. Uh, and for this one, I said, there's, there's a lot of jump scares, obviously in these 80 slasher films, when you consider that there's, you know, 900 of them, uh, I'm sure, uh, Donald could probably attest to that for us. He's an expert at these things. Mm-hmm. Well, well, here's yeah. the question in these 80 slasher films, are there more, more jump well, scares? Well, the boob shots boob usually shots. lead to the jump scares because, you know, that's one of the, one of the, one of the. Cardinal sins of uh, of uh, you know, well, it's one of the cardinal sins Sleight of sleight of hand. One of the cardinal sins of eighties horror was... films is that you know, sex is one of the things that leads to death. <laughs> so this mm -hmm. is, yeah, it's the sleight of hand. It keeps your eyes peeled <laughs> watching the boob shots, and that's so. When this the, one the I titled "Here's Jason." <laughs> So this is towards the end of the first film of the series, the very ori the original Jason film. Comes out like no. And that's another like eighty staple is the jump scare that leads to a dream, because that was what happened in Carrie with the, the arm yeah. jumping up out of the grave. That's this one here, and that mm -hmm. is also uh, the last one I have on my list, which is Nightmare on Elm Street, the original. It's all about dreams, it's especially all, the very dreams. final scene. <laughs> I think Christopher Nolan should remake these. Yeah, he, ha he has to have a special uh, like cameo <laughs> part in there for Heather Lagenkamp. <laughs> Robert Englund's still out there, man. Still role. acting. Uh, yeah. Well, he's we we re but they did do that role. reboot with uh, the guy that played Dwarshack in The Watchmen. <laughs> Uh, oh, Jackie yeah. Earl Haley. Yep. It's right. been a long time since I've watched Nightmare on Elm Street, so when I was re-watching the scene, I was like, uh, I forgot that the, the car has Freddy's colors in it. <laughs> Johnny Depp. <laughs> yes, it does. To Freddy's after you. So I think Freddy's one of the best things of that scene are the creepy little girl singing the Freddy Krueger song. The jump scare is a pretty good jump scare, yeah. but the thing that ruins it for uh, me is how fake she looks as she's getting pulled through the yeah. door. <laughs> and I remember <laughs> reading somewhere that uh, Wes Craven, who, who of course created Nightmare on Elm Street, was not fond of that final scene. Uh, he wanted it to end on the previous scene, and the studio kind of made him add in this uh, this extra ending where you know Freddy was kind of still alive. You know, so you got to make that money on those sequels. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I like Dream Warriors, uh, the third one. Two wasn't bad. <laughs> yeah, third wasn't terrible. But after well, that, I can say the same thing about like, Hellraiser. Hellraiser 1 and 2 were great, and after that, it just went downhill. Speaking of jump scares in horror films, I got the Hellraiser reboot on Hulu. Well, you got uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to check out soon. 
Ooh. So do you guys have any other films that you can think of or anything you wanted to add to this list as far as like horror films go and horror film jump scares? Anything that jumps out at you? <laughs> well, I mean, mm-hmm. I would say if you look at uh, Final Destination, there's all, I'm, but that's less jump scare. I don't know. I think like up, the uh, the one where the kid, um, where the ladder like falls and hits the kid in the eye, like that's a pretty, pretty like you know that one kind of gets you. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, spontaneous thing. Yeah, you and know, uh, yeah. There are some good jump scares yeah, in Gremlins. I would say so. Like when uh, when uh, the gremlin jumps mm-hmm. out of the water at the end and he's like melting and shit. Um, I was thinking uh, yeah. like it's it's like yeah. I can't say any like the Saw mm-hmm. films or the Hostel films <clears throat> or anything like that because that's all that like stupid like like you know like torture porn shit. Um, oh. But if you take like a psychological film like Silence yeah, of the yeah. Lambs. Um, there's a couple scenes in there that are like jump, jump scare scenes, even though it's, uh, a movie that's built on tension and drama. Uh, like when he attacks the guys in the cell, uh, you know, uh, you know how he, when he escapes at the end and he pulls the face off, you know, all that kind of stuff. Like it's very, very subtle little things, but they're kind of like jump scarish too. The Mm -hmm. first time you see Mm -hmm. them. So, uh, we guys good or you need a break before we do the next list or are we good to go? Because we're pretty close to the end here, so. No. So then, uh, no, next good. one is best no, non horror jump yeah. scare. So I did a little like little bonus list here. Uh, there's a lot of movies again that could have went on this list. I picked five that I uh, have a special place in my heart. <laughs> uh, some of them are just because they're films that I rewatch <laughs> a lot. Others are ones that even now fucking creep the shit out of me when I watch it. And one that I remember as being one of my earliest memories of jump scares in a movie that wasn't a horror film. (laughs) Uh, A a scene that freaked me out as a kid. So the first one is my all-time creep-me-out jump scare, and it's from the movie Train Spotting. In this scene, the the main character, played by Ewan McGregor, is... uh, He's a heroin addict. And in this scene, his parents are try, trying to detox him, so they lock him in his bedroom. And over the five days or so that he's locked in there, like, sweating the drugs out of his system, he starts hallucinating. And he sees his friend who, who died from drug overdose. He sees his friend who's in jail right now because of drugs. And then he sees a baby crawling on the ceiling that's uh, mm-hmm. a, ba- a baby that belonged to his friend that died. And he sees the baby crawling on the ceiling and... N- the baby died, so, and what you get is like a really creepy jump died? scare involving this baby ghost oh. that's all part of the hallucination. So I'm going to share my screen with you now so you can enjoy <laughs> this creep session. So this is from the movie Train Spotting. So there we have you and McGregor sweating it out of a system. You have black screen, you don't see it? All I have is a black screen. Let me see if it's yeah, uh, no, not I don't sharing see it or something. It's just a black screen. Let's try this again. I know. Can they finally caught see up with now? you. They know your gig. All right, so that's uh, that's one of that's his friend that's in prison yeah. sitting on top of that cabinet yeah. there. So. Here's Hugh McGregor. So I'm going to skip ahead a little bit here to the part that creeps me out the most. (laughs) The creepy baby. Creepy baby whose head turns all the way around. This is kind of like like the baby (laughs) from Ally McBeal that does the dance. That was the jump scare is the baby (laughs) falling off the ceiling. Oh, no. It's I, I watch that scene nowadays and it fucking creeps oh, yeah, the yeah, shit yeah. out of me. It's a weird, it's a weird scene, but a very like a a, a real like interpretation of like I, I, what I imagine like detoxing from heroin must feel like. The next one is from Seven, and it's oh god, this is such a good one. 
Uh, What's in a box is a great scene, but as far as jump scares go, this is probably I probably could put this one. I probably could put this one on the list of of like horror movie jump scares. Uh, But I feel like I feel like seven is more uh, like a murder mystery, you know, kind of procedural thing like that than it is a horror film. Even though it has some pretty horror film elements to it, but yeah, this is this is a special mm-hmm. kind of jump scare right here. <laughs> and it's sloth. Yeah, where the SWAT guy gets right up next to him and he goes, mm-hmm. you "Got what you deserved," and then the guy and starts it's, it's twitching. It's also creepy when you see like yeah. the photos he took. You know, sh- sh- show that this guy's been getting tortured for like a year now. Hmm. Yeah. And the guy looks like something yeah, right out of exactly. a, um, a zombie movie, you know? The fact that those guys were able to keep from shooting him. I honestly believe I probably would have just started firing the minute that dude started moving. Like, <laughs> yeah, no, I would have been like, I, I, sorry, I, I'm my, sorry I my shot my gun, are... but I shit my pants at the same time. I don't know what you want me to do. <laughs> but that is that is like an <laughs> ultimate in terms of like uh, uh, jump scares. Now, are you guys hearing the sound okay on these videos or is it mostly like low? It's only video. All right. I'm, no, uh, it's all. It's only video. I haven't heard anything. <laughs> and my and my screen is about this big. I'll, yeah. show you, I'll, I'll send you a picture of what I what I what I what I have. I'm gonna draw a <laughs> sketch as to what. I'm well, this is why I said it's good that we can kind of describe I'm at least what's you. happening for people listening to the show. Uh, the next one is one that I consider my earliest memory of a jump scare, and it is from Pee Wee's Big Adventure. <laughs> And it is, tell them that Large Marge sent you. And you look at it now, and it's like, it's goofy. It's a real (laughs) Tim Burton moment. But when I was a kid, man, yeah, when I was a kid, man, Mm -hmm. that shit creeped me out. Very (laughs) claymation-y. Especially this lady that they Mm -hmm. got to play the role. She's creepy in and of herself. (laughs) That's weird, Mike. <laughs> that's that's what I get. I get that little. It looks like it's coming from a phone. <laughs> 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 oh, it's so goofy now. Like I look back at it and like, man, you were an idiot when you were a kid because that shit, it's funny now. But it was it was pretty creepy back then. <laughs> uh, the next one I have here is another. I think pretty good. Like modern version of a jump scare that's not from a, a horror film and it's from the dark night uh and this is the scene where harvey dan is speaking with the mayor yeah you know about what's going to happen when they yeah and then here Tell comes the, the crime in the city and uh, yep no, 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 and that brings me to that brings me to the last one, which I think is this one really got me, man, because it was not it was very unexpected in this film for me, even though I knew it was something you know that had the possibility of happening. But the fellow, the Fellowship of the Rings, and it's a scene where uh, mm-hmm. Frodo is reunited with Bilbo, and Bilbo sees his precious one more time, and asks if he can hold it. <laughs> and the video the video is actually titled on YouTube The Bilbo Baggins Jump Scare. <laughs> so I'm gonna bring that up for you now. 
<laughs> and I don't think you need sound for this, do you, Mike? I'm sure you've seen this one a few times. <laughs> oh. I'm so here sure it is. a million times. Yeah, so here he is. He sees the ring. The sword. Dang. The chain mail. Try it on. Oh, I would like to hold my ring one more time. <laughs> I don't think that's a good idea, Uncle. Large marge on you. <laughs> yeah, and that's what it is. It's like, it's kind of a large I marge large moment. Marged him. But it's so much fucking... <laughs> But it's just much scarier than the large uh-huh. marsh moment. The eyes bulge. Because, I mean, it's so unexpected. It's yeah. it's it's so unexpected, too. But it's this funny. is CGI large marge as opposed to... Mm-hmm. Now, I don't know. Would you call this a uh, jump scare? Because I always jump when I watched oh, yeah. it. When I, watched it. Uh, for me, I don't think that's a... She takes I don't know if that's a jump scare, feet. but that's more of like you're anticipating what's going to yeah. happen. And you don't, you kind of, you, mm-hmm. you don't expect to see it. Yeah. You're getting, <laughs> you, know, you don't cringe. expect to see it. And then it happens. And then it's like, oh, you know, a better, ju- I think a, a scene in misery that would be considered a jump scare probably mm-hmm. would be when he's down, trapped down the basement and the sheriff finds him. And you think, oh my God, he's finally saved. And then she shoots the sheriff from behind. <laughs> mm-hmm. And, you know, and that's kind of like a jump scare. Uh, there's a lot of movies where that sort of mm-hmm. shit happens. Oh, you want a jump scare in a non-horror film? Leonardo DiCaprio getting shot in the head at the end of The Departed. <laughs> when that shit happened, I fucking flew out of my seat. Oh, yeah. I was like, holy shit. <laughs> that is like a jump scare of unexpected proportions. And it's not technically a jump scare. It's just something that catches you by surprise. But I mean that that made me jump, Jesus. Um, so anybody yeah. listening out there, if you have any other examples of jump scares that you would like to mention, you know, tell us on Twitter or by email or one of our other social media links, and we will shout you out on the next episode. So, gentlemen, uh, what do you think of your drinks this evening? I enjoyed mine thoroughly. Mm-hmm. It's sweet, but it's uh, you know, it's it's pumpkin season. Yeah, and after exactly. the weather we had this week, it was it was Jeez. well worth it. Yeah, <laughs> I think I've cleared In my summer. fridge of everything. Uh, summer. Yeah, so. and I uh, I haven't drank in a few days, so it was nice to have a mm-hmm. refreshing beer. This is uh, this was pretty enjoyable. It is a little bitter, like you said, Mike, but I I enjoyed it. And what did you say about your banana pancakes, sir? <laughs> Sounds good. I would like to try that. Uh, a little sweet, but good. Do you have any beer wisdom for us tonight, Mike? It was, it's good, yeah. I do. I have a quote. <laughs> I have a quote tonight. Uh, let me see if I can put it. There it is. He was a wise <laughs> man who invented beer. Well, you remember. The quote is from Plato. Plato, yeah. Well, I think I that used was to love uh, that when I was a kid playing with. That was Plato. one of your. Wasn't that one of your previous like uh, beer facts? No, was not like, Plato. Uh, Plato. It was like beer was invented by like the Mesopotamians or some shit like that. Like <laughs> it's been around forever. <laughs> so let me. It has. Pause this for a second. Thank you for joining us for episode 78 best jump scares we hope you enjoyed listening to this podcast as much as we enjoyed recording it for you don't forget to drop us a line at films and fermentation gmail.com visit us at linktree.com slash films and fermentation to find all of our social media and podcast links don't forget to drop by newsly.me and use the promo code and ferment for a free one month premium subscription or go to w.gg and order yourself some W energy drinks using the promo code films ferments. Make sure you stop by the crossroads between pickled and fermented next week as we present episode 79 this year in film history, 1994. We visited 1984 last time. We decided to jump 10 years into the future and do 1994. I'm Leo. 
Cheers, everybody. I'm Kevin. I'm Mike. Cheers. Cheers. WKRP in Cincinnati. Cincinnati.